Sanbonani, the name is Rise and Sparkle, Miss Ungovernable. Well, it's debatable whether we'll continue with the name Miss Ungovernable, even Rise and Sparkle, because as it were, the producers told me they'd like to do a competition with all our followers and anybody who's interested in our very exciting topics for the next however long we're going to be doing this show for, to do a competition for you, the subscribers and the followers to actually decide what you want to call the show. For now, we're calling it Rise and Sparkle because you know what? This is the age of rising and sparkling. Before we start officially, welcome to Rise and Sparkle. Welcome to Miss Ungovernable. My name is Mandisa Swongile Mashekho. Many of you will know me simply as Mandisa Mashekho. This show is not about me. This show is a womanist show. We're going to talk about the entire background of the show just a little bit later from now. But first, I want to do something that I just think many people don't do and I really hate it because, you know, being the bit of a workerist activist that I am, <laughs> over and above the economic activism that I do, of course I'm popular for the political activism, I'm not sure why, but nonetheless I am. Um, I'd like to introduce the team that we've been working with and then start with the background. First, I'd like to introduce Puseletso Motudi, who's the director of the show. He may not be able to come and join us now and say hi. At a time when it's opportune for him, the team will indicate and we'll bring him forward so that you guys can actually put a name to the face. And then we've got the senior um, DOP, as I've been educated. DOP means Director of Photography. He'll introduce himself, but his name is Lebu Peloyahai. Come on, Lebu. <laughs> there we go. Hi, Melissa. Hi, hi, Lebu. Good How are you doing? <laughs> good, good. Lebu's from uh, Vision View. Would you like to tell our, should I call them viewers, followers, subscribers, our friends and partners, mm -hmm. Rise and Sparkle, a little bit about yourself, please? Uh, I'm uh, Lebu Hang from the East Range, um, the east side of Johannesburg, and that's where I was born. And uh, I fell in love with you know television, and I guess that's the reason why I'm here. This, this is what I do. I, I, I shoot for a living. Great stuff, mm. great stuff. So, uh, Puseleto, thank you so much. Um, sorry, not Puseleto, Lebo, Lebo Khang, <laughs> Lebo Khang. I keep getting <laughs> mixing their names up. <laughs> One of my biggest weaknesses. Thank you so much, Lebo. I um, hope we're going to have a good stretch of a journey sure, together sure, on sure. Rise and Sparkle and that we'll all rise and sparkle together. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Lebo. All right, thank you, Manisa. Thank you very much. Next, we have Maika Davids, also from Vision View. The production company, by the way, Vision View is a production company that we are working with to produce Rise and Sparkle. Micah Davis, Davids, sorry, not Davis, Davids with the D. Micah Davids is our ever smiling, ever competent, ever hardworking, no working hours producer for Rise and Sparkle, <laughs> Miss Ungovernable. It was her idea that we do the competition. So if you like the name and you're thinking, why spoil it? Blame it on her. Hi, Micah, how are you? Hi, Mandisa. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Yourself. Please go ahead and speak to everybody who's listening and watching. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, Mandisa said it all. Like, I'm, I'm a passionate person. I'm very passionate in what I do. I believe in hard work, not necessarily about what you do, but it's a reflection of yourself. So I really just put my heart in everything that I do. That's really it. And you do. No, she definitely does. Maike puts her heart, her soul, her spirit, her inner child, her outer child, <laughs> everybody comes, you know, to the work that we do. Thank you so much, Mike. It's been great working with you so far. And uh, thanks for helping us deliver the very first show. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> there we go. Speak Rise out to and you Sparkle. as well, Mandisa. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Rise and Sparkle. <laughs> Click on the link below. Miss Ungovernable. Next, we introduce Spiso Mbele, who hasn't quite decided what it is that he's doing. But let me tell you a little bit about Spiso. So Spiso and I... Um, are these, uh, you know, what shall we call ourselves, artisanal entrepreneurs. <laughs> you know I'm passionate about the recycling space, the renewable energy space, oh, although it's linked to this dodgy climate change discussion, but nevertheless we do need cleaner technologies in the world. But nonetheless, Spiso is also working with us on Rise and Sparkle, has been putting in a lot of hours, a lot of hard work, lots of fights with me about stuff that, you know, we don't agree on. But here he is, he's going to tell you a little bit more about himself. Spiso, say hi to our listeners. 
Hi, my listeners. Welcome to the show. Hi, hi listeners. Hi, viewers. Hi, everyone. Like Melissa has said, I'm just, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm an ordinary guy who likes doing extraordinary stuff. I believe we live in, 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 in times now whereby anything is possible. So we're just trying out stuff. We're trying out things in the renewable space. We're trying out stuff in the water crisis issues that we have. So we're all over. We're Great just creating. Great stuff. We're creating Wonderful. Stuff. So as time goes, we'll get to know more about stuff that we are all sure. doing, you know, from Vision View, from the Hustle Corner, you know, from Virtual Mkuku. People like Spiso will be telling us a little bit more about themselves. Maybe one day he'll join us on the show. Thank you so much, Spiso. Thanks a lot for coming on board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. And then, uh, last but not least, we have another CISO, also DOP. Again, I, I've been ex educated today. DOP is Director of Photography. Come on, Spiso Msitini. Say hi to our viewers, listeners, followers, subscribers. Hello, Spiso. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for the great work you've been doing. Tell everybody about yourself. Um, my name is Spiso Msitini, and I'm a junior DOP from Vision View and I'm excited to be part of the team. Great stuff, thank you so much. Now that you all know who is behind the scenes and who's doing all this uh, great work uh, behind the podcasts, of course, I should stop calling them podcasts and let me tell you why. Because Pen, you all the Pen, just educated a whole group of us uh, yeah. vodcasters that it's actually incorrect to call um, our videos on the internet podcasts because podcasts, as you all know, should be relating to what was it called the ipod yes you can all relate to the ipod right <laughs> i never had one actually by the way but ipod is audio file this is not an audio file only it's an audio and video file so it's a vodcast but i actually feel vodcast is not appropriate either it's kind of like i don't know maybe it's exciting to say vodcast but could it be video cast could it be vidcast it's your choice maybe it's something you can all chat about and advise us. I mean, we can create new words. We can create new words. South Africa has contributed a lot of new words to the Oxford Dictionary and other dictionaries. And so we can say ours is not a vodcast. It's a vodcast, of course, technically, because, you know, we've been given <laughs> the meanings by Penuel, who's always doing great work in correcting me, by the way, behind the scenes on a lot of stuff. We can also call it a vidcast. We can also call it a videocast. So are we going to be the first podcast in South Africa to call ourselves? The vidcast, of course. That's what womanism is all about. So what's the show about? Rise and Sparkle. We're going to be talking about everything to do, not with women, but with womanism. So I'm not going to bore you today with details of what womanism is and what womanism is not. There's lots of great scholars out there who have done that work long before my age group. Let me not say generation, because the minute I use the word generation, Young people get an opportunity to be ageist and call us oldies. Nonetheless, this show is going to be about anything that affects the economy of women, but in particular black or African women, as a grouping existing in the geography called Africa, but in particular South Africa, and of course other areas around the world that are referred to as diasporas. By the way, South Africa is also a diaspora for those who didn't know. I mean, I welcome any scholar to debate me on it, but that is my firm <laughs> and informed view that we're a diaspora because we're a settler economy. You know, in South Africa, we have native citizens and we have settler citizens, as I refer to them. Those are phrases that I'm going to be using over the years, over the months, if we do exist for years, of course. Thanks with your support, we'll exist for years. And so everything to do with women, that means the entire total economy of South Africa the entire total economy of Africa, the entire economy of the world, because women, is, women are the reason the earth exists. But you know what, more excitingly, I wanted to introduce a brand new way of us, you know, getting into this space, besides creating new terminology like videocast, thanks to the already existing term vidcast, we're also going to be shooting majority of our work, guess where, right where I am, places like Lone Hill Park. Of course, some of you are going to accuse me of being elitist, relax, hold your horses. We have a very exciting partnership with one of the business units 
under the city of Joburg, believe it or not. They can't fix potholes, they can't give us street lights, they can't fix load shedding, can't fix unemployment, can't fix crime, but they can do what? They could definitely join us on this revolutionary path and actually give us permission and special allowances to use any of the parks we so deem fit. Of course, this is Johannesburg, right? Jose Maboneng, Agzalwa Ekul, Ikebengu Zikwel. So unfortunately, we might not come to the park in your neck of the woods, in the city of Johannesburg, city of gold. <laughs> but we'll certainly be covering quite a few of the parks around Johannesburg. And hopefully, you know, we'll cover all of Joburg. You know, uh, we've got seven regions in Johannesburg, right up to Orange Farm, Snake Park in Soweto, Alexandra, Cosmo City, Midrand, the entire spectrum of Johannesburg, even including Port, of course, which is the sub-region that I stay in, in Johannesburg. And so, as far as it is going to be safe, we will definitely be coming to a park in uh, your neck of the woods. And what's even more exciting, we're going to be talking to one of the technocrats. You know, I'm going to try and avoid <laughs> for this show and future shows talking to too many politicians uh, for obvious reasons. Also because I'm a technocrat myself. I really do love and appreciate the space of bureaucracy. I also love and appreciate competence. And so as far as government is concerned and government economic issues or governance issues, anything related to the government, governance of course can also affect business and corporate sector. But as far as the South African government con is concerned, whenever we do topics that involve them, we are not going to invite the politicians as much as we possibly can, unless they need to account of course to Abafaz then we'll call them but as far as it's possible we're going to speak only to the technocrats so we do have a lovely lady who's coming to join us from the business unit that looks after all the parks in Johannesburg got exciting things to talk about part of this show is to not only emphasize educate one another not educate in a one directional way you will be talking to us we will be talking to you or with you You'll be asking us questions. You'll be even giving us information. You'll even be guiding us on stuff that you want to talk about in the future. If I'm a topic switch to Ayan Bora, you have all the leeway. This is the internet. This is the internet. It's the age of information. And so information is not only going to go bilaterally, which means two ways. It's going to go multilaterally. So we'll get insights from you. We'll get data from you. We'll give you data. We'll share insight. You'll give us feedback, you'll ask us questions, and we'll move from there. But one of the key themes of our womanism focus is indigenous knowledge systems across all aspects of our society. As South African citizens, remember women give birth to children and create generations on this earth. Ancestry behind us brought to this earth by women, future generations, otherwise known as posterity, also brought to you courtesy of us and so this show is going to encompass everything and so the city of Johannesburg will have a nice opportunity to talk to us more about how relevant they are in uh, aligning okay one of the key words that are going to be very prominent on this show aligning with our theme of womanism and indigenous knowledge system considering they've got a perfect opportunity they have the parks you know, beautiful parks, I might mention. And so what else are we going to be having, um, you know, um, exciting information about? We are going to run very frequently interviews, engagements, conversations, as far as is possible, closer to the areas that are affected with activists, economic activists. Even though those activists might seem to be operating possibly in the social spaces, or the political spaces, ultimately, their impact is economic. So we're going to be talking to a lot of activists in this show over the next coming few months and over the next few years. Uh, we're going to be going to groundbreaking, cutting-edge stuff, women that are doing it for themselves. I think I'm quite popularly known for being very much against uh, tender pricing, <laughs> tenderpreneurship. And so again, as far as it's possible, it might be discriminatory, you might accuse us of that, but as far as it's possible, we are going to be talking 
to people in the womanist space, whether they be men or women, but mainly women, who are doing wonders, creating wonders, innovating, creating, breaking new ground, breaking ground, creating exciting opportunities for themselves, first and foremost, their families next, their communities, and the people that they might be employing in their entrepreneurship projects that they are pursuing. Whether their entrepreneurship projects are artisanal or seasoned, we're gonna be talking to them. We're also gonna be talking, whether you like it or not, to women who are not necessarily African women, you know, or native citizens who are African, of course, um, of South Africa, but we'll also be talking to our white counterparts. Nothing wrong with me saying that. I want to put it out there because we don't want a situation when we start interviewing, you know, womanists who believe in our agenda, who believe and are convinced spiritually in the soul and in their very beings, even intellectually, that there should be a concerted effort to release black women from the burden of having to bring society to, be, to bear and also bear the economic and social burdens of society that women also deserve their rightful place in this country, in this continent, and certainly in this globe. Yes, we're in a globalized society. You know, one of my favorite topics, the COVID pandemic. We're gonna be talking a lot about that. Very ambitious plans for that. Unfortunately, because in South Africa, it's very difficult to get hold of independent scientific and medical researchers who can give us cutting edge stuff on this project, which unfortunately became a profit driven project for big pharma and globalized big pharma, of course, <laughs> because big pharma is globalized, um, you know, um, agenda to actually make super profits from a pandemic which is really um, very tragic. And so that is also gonna be one of our focus areas. That is a pandemic, or pandemic as I like to call it, that affected the entire world and mainly affected the unemployed and affected the employed equally. Many companies retrenched as a result of collapsing economies. We would know in South Africa, the tourism sector was pretty much decimated. One of my popular sectors, decimated to the core and really needs to be revived. And so that's definitely gonna be a core focus. Maybe we're gonna have an exciting guest very soon who happens to be a South African. I'm talking to a cutting edge scientist who's in the biomedical space, trying to convince them to come through and talk to us frankly. Oh, now I sound like JJ, hi JJ. <laughs> Who's gonna to talk to us frankly about COVID, the medical scientific politics behind COVID as well as the economic, the real economic politics around COVID and how it affected South Africans and particularly women. You'd remember that when the lockdowns were introduced by the president of South Africa and others around the world who were cooperating with the globalists, we had about 3 million women in South Africa, I mean, rather 3 million workers, employees, of which over 80% of those were females and predominantly black native citizen females who lost their jobs and were not able to recover them. We're gonna be talking about all of that and real cutting edge stuff um, in future shows of Rise and Sparkle. Click on the link below, make sure you subscribe, you follow us and um, join us again pretty soon as we welcome our guest from the city of Joburg. This is about as much publicity as I'm gonna give you city of Joburg, you know you don't deserve it but today is the last time. Next time I have someone from the city of Joburg here on this show, they're gonna have to earn their space for real. I'm joking, they did earn it, they gave us the parks. Yes, as I said, as I promised, we have Jenny Moodley from Johannesburg City Parks and Zoo. Look, I know of Joburg City Parks from my previous life in government, but now apparently they include the zoos. So who knows, maybe one of these days we'll be broadcasting from the zoo. Thank you. <laughs> Jenny, welcome. How are you? Thank you so much, Mandisa, for affording us this wonderful <coughs> platform and in a park. We're very privileged. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> I know very soon I'm going to be getting other people from government saying, why don't you want to talk to us? 
Look, again, let me reiterate. The reason we're talking with Jenny Moodley is because Jenny is the spokesperson for Johannesburg City Parks and Zoo. And again, we negotiated at length with their department and explained to them what we want to do. And they were so excited. And they said, listen, they're happy to work with us. And so here she is. I could just tell you a little bit of what I've been sent about uh, Johannesburg City Parks and Zoo, who are basically the custodians of all parks nature reserves i didn't know about nature reserves but nature reserves street trees yeah street trees so there's going to be a lot from us on indigenous knowledge systems related to trees and they're also responsible for the management of the johannesburg zoo as i said earlier within the entity is the business support division which is uh, what jenny is going to be telling us a little bit more about um, who are responsible for four key work streams so work streams is just a fancy word for different sections you know that they uh, take care of and uh, these sections are obviously IT. Everybody has to have IT incorporated into their business plans, I suppose. Intergovernmental and media marketing and communications, as well as strategic support. And so um, Jenny is going to tell us a little bit more about her work. And of course, we're going to be interrupting because we are interested in aspects of her work that actually affect us directly in the city of Johannesburg, for, for those of us who stay in the city of Joburg, but also for women and women who are in businesses or any other professional activity that might benefit from having a direct and strategic relationship or tactical relationship even with the city of Joburg's um, Zoo and Parks Department. Hey, Jenny. Hey. I'd really like for you to tell, you know, our subscribers yourself a little bit more about the work that you do. Absolutely. And like I said, with specific focus to how it affects the communities, you know, here in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the, the narrative or the perception has been we just the grass cutters and grave diggers yeah. because we manage cemeteries as well. But there's so much more in this day and age with so many social challenges, you know, from uh, taking uh, a responsibility for displaced persons living in parks okay. to safety of women. A good indicator of how safe parks are is by the number of children and women using your facilities. So safety is a huge concern. And hence, we, as part of the Business Development Unit, we've commenced a program called Adopt a Park. Okay. Working with community. So you're here in the lovely Lone Hill Park. Yes. And as you can see... And we love it. Like, we are breathing in fresh air, like oxygen from the trees. Yeah, couldn't <laughs> ask for more. And, and, you know, so in terms of communities participating, it's just such far-reaching implications. You yeah. Know, um, giving somebody that's living alone a place to come in, plant a tree pull out a weed is, is basically giving some people a purpose. Look, I, I like what you're saying, and I don't mean to stop you rudely. I really okay. like what you're saying, except, you know, I'm quite an active citizen, and I've got a big park in the area where I stay, for mm -hmm. instance. And I mean, except for the people who clean the park, and of course they do a very good job because our park is very well maintained, and I'm pretty sure other people around Joe would feel the same, but there are some parks, obviously, that have problems like crime issues, etc. And so what I'm interested in is the part that you know, your, your activities with our communities and specifically activities that impact on women and children. Understanding that now, especially with COVID, people were locked in mm -hmm. um, and really, you know, we all felt very claustrophobic. And I, I don't know, I didn't hear much about city parks or zoos or whatever, you know, having specific programs to get people out of their homes and come and get some fresh air in a safe space. And more particularly what you also said about um, people who might want to get involved in cleaning activities or especially the indigenous plants, uh, planting activities, and more other, I mean, I'm hoping you have exciting programs around educating citizens about indigenous plants and why it's important to preserve them and their uses and actually even encourage people to get, you know, um, to pick some leaves or whatever it is that they need. Well, that's quite a loaded question, very relevant also. So there are different programs, some of which are community driven, but largely we work through our environmental calendar, through our Safer Cities programs, through our Smarter Parks initiatives. So there's a series of baskets in terms of how we commence or conduct our activations. But I'd like to talk about the community involvement. Because yeah. that for me That's is what we want to know. Such a driving force in terms of how we can make parks better. Are we doing enough? Absolutely, we can do more. And I think that's yeah. where the, the, we, we're saying, we're calling on communities, we have the Adopt a Park initiative. And for us, we are saying to communities, we're not asking you to cut the grass 
and plant the trees, we're asking you to work with communities and host these activations, uh, a flea market, uh, uh, bringing... You know, that would be amazing. I mean, do you know how many people are struggling to get products out into the market, for instance? Yes. You know, I mean, I, I know a lot of people who make all sorts of products, yeah. but don't have a sales platform because, you know, malls are expensive. You know, exactly. poor, poor women can't afford to rent out a shop in a mall. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the taxi ranks and all of that where you normally get informal traders around mm -hmm. transport nodes, you know, so, sometimes are congested. And what do you do about encouraging entrepreneurs to work together with you in the parks? You know, th we, again, th th these initiatives are there. We're not getting communities. App affluent communities are very involved to some extent. I see. So like Lone Hill, the white people around <laughs> here. Okay. Obviously, you know, there's a lot active. of black people staying and here, but know, I mean. It's like it's a squeaky wheel syndrome. The person that makes the most noise gets service first. So yeah. we need to change that narrative. Service delivery is the story. Or maybe the person that uses the right platforms. I mean, we're mm. in the internet age. Absolutely. So we're saying get onto our websites. There's wonderful platforms. Talk to our head What's your website address? Uh, www.jhbcityparksandzoo.com City Parks and Zoo. Who's going to remember that? Is it and Zoo, A-N-D? A-N-D. Dot com. Uh, and Zoo dot com. Um, uh, or send me an email to talk to us. Talk, talk to us. Talk to us. Yeah. Us at mm -hmm. jhbcityparks.com. Uh, yeah, and we will certainly make sure that the relevant person we have a, a, a wonderful influencer, Bushlale. Listen, I, I am. I want to assure you yeah. that on this show, you the only. <laughs> I'm going to be getting a lot of inquiries because let's start here. Talk to us. That's mm. your email address, right? That's correct. Talk number two, us at JHB City Parks and Zoo. No, no, just. JHB City Park. JHB City Park. So it's talk to us at jhbcityparks.com. Absolutely. Everybody who didn't get that email, we're definitely going to type it in um, you know, what the comments, mm -hmm. and you're all going to get access to it and send an email if you want to do something that's going to affect or impact your entrepreneurial activities or your products that you make, and you'd like to maybe have a... Uh, I, I know I'd, like, I'd love to host a tea party. I'd also love to host... A business shower, one of the things we're going to be doing with many other organizations that we're working with to push women's businesses. But we're going to be doing a lot of stuff with Hustlers Corner, with Virtual Mkuku, and of course Rise and Sparkle with City Parks. But more than anything, it's not about us. What I want from Jenny is a commitment mm -hmm. that when you send emails, perhaps you'll copy us in the email so that we can help you with pushing them about the things that they can help you with that they'll get, that you will get a prompt response. Am I wrong, Absolutely. Jenny? Absolutely, it comes right into my personal uh, email box, so I will take personal responsibility for that. I like that. <laughs> and I can tell you, uh, you know, I, I can be quite persistent <laughs> when I don't get responses from my Listen, team. Listen, I mean, you were, you were very good with us. You were yeah. very good with our team, yeah. very good with, uh, you know, Mike. Uh, I didn't respond to some of the emails, mm -hmm. but I saw them, and I was very excited. I was yeah. like, oh, at least these guys... You know, are trying to be efficient. What concerns me is the, um, what you said, and, and I think what you're saying is, is marvelous. Mm. And this is the first time even I've heard, and I, I'm quite an activist. Mm. I generally know what's happening in you know, different corners of not just government, but the private sector and the entrepreneurial spaces. So I'm very, very excited, the mm. fact that you're willing to partner up with people. Because you said something very interesting earlier. And you said that in the affluent areas, so this is an mm. affluent area, right? you tend to be a lot more organized. There isn't really a crime problem here, like I said earlier, or that much maybe there is, but it's under control. There's proactive security management. There's all sorts of resources. And mm -hmm. of course, we could argue that the people here are rate payers, and I feel very passionate about people mm -hmm. not paying rates, but with the poverty and un unemployment that we have, people just can't afford to pay rates. You know, I've been boycotting paying my rates for my own private reasons. I'm not going to raise it here. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, we all have to pay our rates and taxes so that we can get these services. But poor people can't. Entrepreneurs are struggling now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really, really keen to see that come to life. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm really keen to see that come to life. I'm really keen to see what you're saying come to life in the less yeah. affluent areas, or let's call it what, it what it is, in the poorer areas of the city. I think the starting point for that is residents who don't demand service delivery. Eventually, it might get into petitions and protest action, burning tires, and so on. But the entry level to talking to your city 
is basically through Joburg Connect and through your ward councillor. Okay. And it's very important that re as a resident, no matter where you are in the city of Joburg, that you are very familiar with how to connect with us through this very uh, entry point of a platform, which is Joburg Connect. Joburg Connect. Now is Joburg this an Connect online uh, web, on, yes. YouTube, where is it? It's, on? it's zero 01, I can give you the, the telephone number. Okay, zero 011 zero one 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 mm -hmm. 375 mm -hmm. double five double five. Double five zero double one five. one three seven five double, double five. five. That's double Joburg five. Connect Joburg on Connect. the phone. That's correct. Is there a toll free number uh, from your cell phone? Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I, I gather from the Joba Connection. We don't have a time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, I, I, I only cut the grass, right? <laughs> I, I would think that from the, you know, going forward, it, it's an extremely another opportunity for the city to relook its technology and systems. And it's all going or to... Or at least call people back. Call people back, yeah. you know. Uh, but again, if you, and just for your show, yeah. talk to us at jhbcityparks.com, I will call you back. Excellent. So, so I'm saying, you know, uh, and if you need to know anything else, I, I've had the privilege of working for the city for over 30 years. And yeah. I can tell you. Yeah, um, that's a long that's time. A, that's, that's more than a lifetime for my sins. Yeah, that's <laughs> really. For, for city of Joburg? Yes. Uh, in <laughs> How do you last that long? Employees don't last that long anymore. You know, <laughs> from I, I, what I've, I've gone heard. through, I've started off uh, right from <laughs> revenue and billing all the way to inner city. And how junior were you? I was an uh, entry level Kelly girl. Oh, just great. To tell you, uh, yes. Uh, and of course. Oh, like when there was still Kelly Go. I remember <laughs> Kelly Go. <laughs> I used to get jobs through Kelly Go. Exactly. They were like one of five agencies I used to use every time I was unemployed because <laughs> I did a bit of the job hopping thing. Yeah. And you know, like most people, I got to the city with one suitcase and a baby. <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and I can tell you now, over time, I, I believe I owe the city to put back. Uh, it's blessed me with many things. Suitcase and a baby. I suitcase came suitcase and a, and a belly. Brewing a baby, which is most of, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, most women can relate yeah, to that. Exactly. Majority women can and relate you know, to and that. And there's a need to sh to pay it forward. Uh, and I definitely, so in, in definitely. That. And I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Jenny, I'm for so coming excited. to our show. I'm really, really excited about the future possibilities. But mm -hmm. of course, this show is not about the city of Joburg. Absolutely. But we are definitely shocked, surprised, and proud and grateful, very, very grateful Thank you. that you've actually been able to agree to work with us so that we have this wonderful opportunity to be live in the parks, you know. Um, and so for that, for your time, mm -hmm. uh, we'd love to give you a gift, but we haven't grown to that point yet. Maybe we'll give you a bottle of water. Uh, there's there's okay. your gift. <laughs> I've been gifted just by being here, so I'm Thank honest. you so much. We'll repeat all the information you gave us. Thank you for being on the show. And we are really, really excited. Jenny, by the way, is our very first guest. So the day we have a six-month anniversary, 12-month anniversary, three-year anniversary, five-year anniversary, she'll always be there to celebrate and commemorate with us because she's our very, very first guest. And appropriately so, she's a woman who started out working, you know, for the municipality. She still works for the municipality, but as a very young lady, a little baby and a suitcase like majority of us as you know we are economic migrants majority of us mm -hmm. in Johannesburg you know we're native citizens of other areas of South Africa and so we come to Johannesburg to ply our trade and as the womanist Afro womanist um, penultimate or ultimate Afro womanist show of South Africa we are going to make very sure that we make a real contribution and not just come and share information take information give you information but have a real impact in your lives in whichever spaces you might live it um, and in that uh, regard I want to repeat the phone number that you can contact at City of Joburg if you're a resident of City of Joburg and you're running a business small business in the City of Joburg even if you're running it from the kitchen of your house from the back of your of your house or you're in a fancy office park but you're a startup the number is 011-375-5555 if you want to get in touch with Joburg City Parks and Zoo and do some activations or activities or you want to come and showcase your products or have events at their parks, they open to receive your requests. They're not going to charge you anything unless you damage stuff, of course. And then we'll bring them back maybe one day when they're ready to tell us a little bit more about their indigenous plants program and how they're tying in, for instance, with traditional health practitioners, traditional healers, anybody who's basically in the wellness and natural health space and wants to know more about indigenous plants and how they can participate with the city of Joburg. But as for us, the Afro Womanist show, Rise and Sparkle, remain ungovernable. Click on the subscribe button and continue following us until the next episode 
Thank you so much for joining us on this very first show. Uh, next episode, we'll be informing you a bit more about the competition that we're going to be running for the naming of the show and uh, also telling you a little bit more about all the exciting stuff that's coming up. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. La, 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 la.